Hi guys. So we're going to work with this 11 year old Arabian gelding here that's um, had a bit of a problem with um, bridling and, and getting the bit in. I have worked with this horse just a little bit, uh, lunging him a couple um, circles around and getting some respect that way. But what the owner mentioned is that he'll either pick his head way up, which I have not tried this yet, or he will put his head really low, okay? So I'm going to work on um, I'm going to get a baseline with this. I'm going to I'm going to try this, and then we're going to see um, what we need to do and, and how we're going to go from there. All right now, if we use these methods, we'll see what we have what how this works out. But I'm going to use my right hand always between the horse's ears, and I use the left hand to position this horse's head almost in a hug. Okay, we'll come around here so you can see that. Hey, buddy, back. Oh boy. Good boy. Okay, and this is not an uncommon problem that happens. And there's the baseline. Okay, so now I know he did try low and he went high. So what we're going to work through with this, we're going to take the bridle off, and we're going to work on teaching him to open his mouth. Right now, again, to to really let this soak in, left hand is going to direct this head. Right hand is going to position the up and down, okay? So I want him to give to the pressure, the pressure on the nose to bend in, and then the pressure between his ears on the pole to keep this head in the correct position. Now, sometimes if you do this enough, the horses will really put their nose down really low. If we can be coordinated enough, I'll block it and lift that head up to the height I'm looking for with my knee. So he learns that this is the zone I want him to stay in. There's no reason to reach way up in the air to try to get a bridle on your horse or to try to reach way over, okay? So we're going to hold him in this position and if he raises his head, here's the big key with this and I see this happening all the time, is when that horse lifts its head up, people release the pressure. And if we release the pressure when he puts his head up and throws enough of a fit, he'll do it again every time, okay? So we use pressure to teach a horse, but it's not the pressure they actually learn from. It's the release of the pressure. So if he goes to do that, I am not going to release this pressure until he comes back to this zone, okay? So I'm going to use my finger and I'm going to place it right in the corner of his mouth here. When he opens his mouth there and is relaxed, I'm going to let him flail that head around. He doesn't get the release until he opens the mouth right there. Release that pressure, okay? That's the first step. Now he tried to raise his head, right? And he did raise his head. We just didn't release that pressure until he opens his mouth. There we go. Now, there is a gap here. I know you, he can't see it because of his lips, but at the corner of the mouth, the back molars the teeth start. I don't want to push there. If you're putting your finger where you're getting bit, find another place to put your fingers, okay? We're really, we're going to be right here where the corner of that mouth is. I'm asking that mouth to open up. Really what we're teaching our horse to do is open that mouth a good two or three inches wide. That was a pretty good one. I was slightly late. There we go. All on feel. When he release, or when he opens, we release that pressure, okay? Now we'll do that again. He's fight, fighting that a little bit. I want him to understand as this goes on, we're going to start holding our hand in there longer and longer because I want this horse to hold that mouth open indefinitely. Okay? Indefinitely until, there we go, we release the pressure. Okay? Come back up here so the camera can see us. There. And that's all that is, is teaching that horse, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Okay? Now, I want this horse to open that mouth and hold it open for a long time because here's the one big problem with what's getting created. The horse started to move a little bit and the rider starts thinking, well, I need to hurry up. So what happens when we go fast is we're not as precise, right? So when we're not as precise and we hurry, that bit is going to hit those horse that teeth at some point and it's like eating ice cream and that spoon bangs in your teeth. So what it creates is that horse that starts coming back further so we try to hurry it faster, we cram it in and we start in that cycle really going backwards and causing the, that horse to have a bridling issue. Ironically, no colt I've ever started had a bridling issue. 
They're always taught that, okay? So when you think bridling, remember this phrase, it will take as long as it takes. Do not rush it, okay? Now, I'm gonna start teaching him on this other side of his, we'll come around so you can see that here too. I'm gonna start teaching this, ultimately, I'm gonna cue him on the left side, because that's generally what we're, what we're gonna be bridling from. But I'm gonna use my thumb now. There, there's opening, but I want him keeping his head in this position, okay? I know really the camera's not gonna be able to see that really well. Take another step over here, buddy. Okay, position, right, that zone. I want him right about the, my belly button. I want the middle of his head right about at my navel, okay? It's a great position for me. There, he went to raise that up. Key is don't release the pressure. Now, guys, if you have a horse that's really raising their head a lot at this, and, and you've got your arm over top of them, if you have shoulder problems, is not a great position. It can really cause shoulder problems if they jerk their head up quickly, okay? If that's the case, use that halter. Position it down with that halter until they're giving to the pressure that way every time. Okay, if, if it's really, really bad, don't get in a wrestling match with your horse, you won't win. Okay, there. Asking him, hold that in position. Nope, nope. Sometimes you do need to turn your head away. If, they're not, if you haven't really got your horse respectful, turn that head away because you don't want to get bashed in the nose. There, when he's calm and relaxed, let him out. Teach him to be calm and relaxed. Come on, buddy. And everything will be fine, right? The horse has everything to gain by softness and nothing to lose. So we want to remind him of that. You have everything to gain and nothing to lose. There. When he brings that head over, relaxed, we'll release it. Okay, I want to teach him indefinitely and forever. Hold that mouth open. Now if you have a horse, here's a troubleshooting tip, if you have a horse that's really, really stubborn with us and will not open their mouth, take your thumbnail, slightly touch that jaw, that gum, if you will. Okay, soft as possible, firm as necessary. I'm asking with the dull, blunt part of my finger, just my finger, my thumb. If that doesn't work, I'll move my thumb a little bit and use my, th my thumbnail. That teaches him, hey, just open your mouth and you'll never feel that thumbnail. Okay, as long as it takes. Every, this will take as long as it takes. The key is here, he kind of got his nose up or his head up in the air. We're not going to release that pressure again until he comes back. There, release it there. So if your horse at some point, just because maybe they're even having a bad day, they go through this and they go to pull away from you like that and maybe even run backwards. Some horses will run backwards. Let them go. Don't release the pressure. If you can, stay right with this position. If they go backwards long enough, their butt muscles will start to burn and they'll look for another way and they'll stop and when they stop and relax, we will release the pressure. There we go. Good boy. Good boy. Right? We use pressure to teach a horse, but it's not the pressure they learn from. It's the release of the pressure. So we have to remember, don't release the pressure when they're, go oh boy, when they're in that goofy mode, when they're in that goofy situation. Because we'll teach them to be goofy and naughty, really, and put their head up and there you go. Okay, you got a little bit out of position, so we'll Come right back to it. Remind him with his right hand. Hey, you're getting a little high. If he goes backwards, that again. There, until he can, will release that. Okay, this is why this, in a, in a big indoor, like, like this is a great place to practice this. Because if he needs to go backwards and move around, he can. No problem. There we go. There, now I've had my thumb in that finger, or in his mouth. For, for a few seconds, right? And he feels just licking and chewing. There we go. <laughs> he's even licking my, my thumb. There, there. When he's relaxed, we'll release. When he's not, we'll just keep asking. There. The longer the horses have gotten away with this, the longer this will take to reprogram it. Okay, I'd like him to come down just a little bit more. He's a little high. 
There. There. We'll do this a couple more times and then we're going to bring in the bridle. It's shedding season. And there's horse hair floating around here. Oh, good boy. That was a good one. It's probably his best one yet. Good boy. If you have a horse that's really sensitive with ears, which this horse is not, but if you had one and you couldn't get that bridle over, that's something else we have to come back and work out before we really try doing that bridle up. That's a good boy. Yeah, he's a quick learner. Not a boy. Okay, can we grab the bridle there? Thank you. Okay, so we're back with the bridle. Just throw those reins up over. And I am going to leave the halter on just momentarily. Um, oh, there's a big sigh. Now, this, when I'm working this in, I'm going to slide this back and forth a little bit before I'm asking for that bit to come in because I just want them to know that hey all this some of them get a little goofy when this stuff comes by their eyeballs and things so we just want to make sure that's not an issue here now this will take as long as it takes right if he wants to put himself in this goofy position I'm actually gonna leave him up here for a second that's not comfortable look he'll want to put his head down bring him back to that position Bring him back down here, okay? What we're looking for is that horse that's gonna hold that mouth open for that bit. There, it's right at his teeth and his mouth is open, but I'm not pulling it in yet. I want him to just work through this. If he wants to back up, we'll let him back up. There, when he relaxes, we'll slide that bit in, okay? Certainly not done yet. But I want him to know and remember, throwing his head up in the air, throwing that little fit, will get him nowhere. It's just uncomfortable. Okay, we'll come off. Now, I haven't talked about this yet, but when it's time to bring that horse, the, the bit and the bridle off, I never pull it out. I'll bring it up and let them spit it out. If they hold on to it, let them hold on to it. They'll eventually let it go. Okay, the worst thing we can do is pull that out and again, cause that situation where that bit bangs into their teeth. Relax, relax, relax. There. So he was fighting me a little bit. I held it back to his nose. When he relaxed, we'll release it. Now he's almost thinking about going low, right? Too low. If he continues, we'll bring that knee and lift that head in that zone. With this pressure that if he goes down low, when he gets in that spot, we release the pressure and he'll come back to that height of not dropping it down. There we go. Wait, wait. There we go. Now he's being really patient. Just wait for him here. He's holding the position good, just kind of clamping those teeth. So we'll just wait. There we go. There we go. Hold in this position the whole time, right? That's that's what we're looking for. That's a good boy. There, we'll take it off again. This should be no different than brushing your horse, saddling your horse, picking their feet, anything. Right? All these things we do with their body. It should be no different when we go and work the mouth and the bit. And, and I, I want... If he wants to back up, we'll let him back up. But it still didn't go away. Come on. Let him chew on it here for a bit. Whoa. Whoa. No, good boy. Good boy. Right back in position. That, no, uh, uh, uh. Remember, everything will take as long as it takes. No rush and no hurry. He's just really just kind of clamping down here. And I don't have my fingernail available because of the gloves. And that's okay. I'll just hang out here for a second. He'll realize, and really this may be a passive aggressive going, yeah, I'll just hang out here, buddy. You'll quit. Well, I won't, but 
Okay, and now he's looking for another, another try. Thought about going up, notice he didn't that time. And then as soon as his feet stopped moving, he opened his mouth. So we use pressure to teach, but it's not the pressure they actually learn from. It's the release of that pressure. And I want this, right, I'm not trying, and here's a really a big key with this. I'm not trying to be perfect doing this, right? In this case, the throat latch was over, across his nose and everything else. And I want him to know that this is life. The, the bright and I don't have to be perfect, in other words, because we won't be, and that's okay. All right, it's getting a little bit better. We're going to take the halter off. Sometimes we've got to trust our horse a little bit, or they'll never get better. We've got to ask them to be better. The spot we want to be. Oh, good boy. Oh, good boy. He scared himself. And that's okay. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Come spit it out again. We'll come back again. No, come in. Come in. Again, he's just kind of holding that nose down or those teeth together. We'll just kind of wait, wait. There he goes, and there's the bit. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut camera here for a second. We're gonna get a different, a different kind of bridle set up because I wanna practice with another option here, okay? So we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back, and I brought the Makati set up. And the only difference is that that's what I had right here with me, okay? And we're gonna let him, hey buddy, come here. There's another horse working down here and he's slightly distracted, which is perfect because that gives us opportunity to get him better. Got that, got our Makati tail caught up here. There we go. Okay, so nothing changes other than now we do have a little bit of the curb chain on here. It's got to go under that bottom lip so that can make a little difference, but we're going to treat it all the same. Okay, bring that head up. He was trying to get out of position a little bit there. Bring that head up. There we go. Now this is an all metal bit. It is cold. It's not the rubber. There we go. But look at that. He still figured it out. He's still fine. Okay, this was on a bigger horse last. We'll shorten it up one. And, and I would encourage you guys, once you get good with this, your horse is really getting these skills, even make it a little bit tighter than normal, just so in, in case you forgot to adjust it after it was on another horse and they still figure it out. Hey, you're okay. No, oh, good boy. Kind of caught a little bit on that chin strap. Fine, that happens, right? Okay, ask him again. There we go. Nice and slow. Again, that strap caught on that bottom lip, and that's okay. Okay, make the right thing easy, the wrong thing difficult. So that horse realizes that it's okay. I think we just got out of here, and then we're gonna practice it, and practice it, and then practice it some more. He's He's thinking about there. Now that one did bump his teeth a little bit there. We got the throat latch went through his mouth and everything. Hey, that happens. That's life sometimes. It's okay. He figured it out. We'll spit it out. Head in that position, right? In that position. Come on, bring your head back here. There we go. There we go. Okay, that's really the key with bridling. Now, at some point in time, he may have one of his moments where he forgets things, right? And say he has time off, or maybe somebody else saddled or goes to attack this horse up and bump his mouth with that bit. And he might come back to his little bit of, a, of an issue for a, for a bit. Bring him back through these steps.
Okay, work him back through this to where he is remembering it's just simpler if he's calm and relaxed and waits, okay, and work through those steps. Um, and again, just to kind of recap this, no horse was ever started with a bridling issue. It was taught to them because they would react to some way and we would release the pressure. That starts in many times, that starts to get them thinking, hey, I might be on to something here. I can make this a little bit difficult. Not all of them are even that thoughtful on it, but it can, that same, that reaction even, if you will, can create those issues, okay? So, hope that helps some of you that may watch this. I'm Luke Reinbold. We'll see you down the trail.